Ikaru, it's great to have you here. Your game finished in a draw. Please take us through your emotions during the game. Yeah, I mean, um, let's just say I, I lost a game in the Rapid Chess Championship. I mean, I think already it's many weeks ago now, probably like two months, three months. Um, but I lost a game in this Bishop G5 line to Fabiano, um, and then I, I looked at this thing that I came up with in the game, this whole HXG5 Bishop E6, thought it was interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it was all prep up until about move 20. It wasn't very difficult to find moves, but then inevitably, like every other game so far, there was a moment where I got a little bit careless for two to three moves, and maybe Richard had some chance when I, I played this very strange uh, king, king, king E5 and this whole rook A1 thing, but again, I mean, with, with white not being able to ever push the F-pawn, I think it, it's always very close to a draw. So I didn't ever feel like I was in danger, but I mean, perhaps I could have been more precise. We quite seem sometimes uh, hear G5 in this tournament. Um, let's say, if you were to explain to your audience uh, why these moves are good, uh, like pushing the pawn in front of your king, uh, what would you say? Well, luckily I hadn't castled my king yet, so it's not a complete violation of the rules because I can castle to the king side or the queen side there, but you know, I think at the end of the day, there are obviously are very many levels in chess, and essentially when you start out, you learn all the basic rules, and then eventually you learn how to break all the rules, or when, when there are exceptions. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I would say, is that as you keep improving, you learn which rules you can break and which ones you can't. But even beyond that, with computers nowadays, they, they pretty much say you can do anything, and it doesn't matter. You push the G-pawn, you push the H-pawn, you castle, who cares? I mean, it's, it's all okay. So... Um, I mean, sometimes you feel, I guess we as humans feel like we don't really understand the game, but overall it's just there are different levels, and chess is a game where you, you learn the thousand rules and you learn when you can break them. Right, and uh, speaking of uh, Madrid, here we're in an amazing city, you arrived quite uh, early. How important is for a player to, let's say, acclimate? Yeah, I mean, I think it's quite important, especially if you're coming from another continent. I think, I, I suspect Fabiano had been in Europe for, for a while, but um, at least for me, coming from the U.S., where there's a six-hour time difference, certainly makes a difference. But even beyond that, I remember when I played in 2016, I think I got to Moscow maybe three days before the event started, and I never really got on track, sleep schedule, or, or any, anything. I never had a good routine, so... Yeah, I think it's important to come maybe a week, week and a half early. I mean, I know in the old days, people would come like a month early, you know, the times of Lasker and those, those guys, but um, I think a week's enough. But it's, it's important to be on the time zone and feel like you're, you're, you're ready to play. You have some great memories connected with Spain. You won your first elite tournament uh, actually in Spain. Is there some kind of aura or some extra power that you feel here? Um, I don't know. I mean, San Sebastian was so, so many years ago now. I mean, that was, what, 2009, I think it was. So, um, you know, I feel like I've actually probably had my best results in Spain and in France, in particular, those two countries. So I don't know if there's anything special, but I feel like I play well um, in, in these places. So that's what it is. Perhaps my final question for today. Uh, how has your audience been reacting so far to your six hours long games than they usually are used to see you playing three minutes? Well, I mean, I think uh, as long as you're competitive, it's always going to be hype. I think uh, there's a certain uh, view that the, the streamers, when they play tournaments, aren't going to do very well, or people want to see, the, see the, sort of the, the car crash or the train wreck. But I think as long as you're playing reasonably well, then, then good things happen. That being said, I mean, every game, like I said, I've found a way to make sure it goes longer than it should. I mean, today, luckily, it didn't, didn't cost me where the game went six hours, but... Um, I mean, uh, there's, there's suspense, and I think people always watch that. Thanks a lot. Sure.